Welcome to the JSON Path video. What we'll be doing is giving you a quick overview of JSON and JSON Path, and then we'll dive into the basics on how to query your JSON data. But what is JSON? Well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object no Notation. It's a light text data format. It's based off the JavaScript language. It's easily readable by people and machines. Um, it also follows the C suite of programming languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Perl, and so on. JSON has two main attributes. The first one being key value pairs, which is what we call objects in programming language, and lists of values, which is what we call arrays in programming. JSON path is very similar to XPath to query XML. Instead of querying XML, you're, you're querying JSON objects. The tool that I'm using, let me drag this down so you can see it, is jsonquerytool.com, a JSON query tool app. Uh, pretty intuitive, uh, easy to use, and it's really helpful. Scroll back up here for a second. So the one you see right here is my JSON file or my JSON data. Um, it's modeled after the Northwind Microsoft data set that everyone knows and is, more, is really familiar with. And then the next screen on the, to the right is our query screen. We'll use JSON path to actually query a data. And then below, of course, our results. In our JSON file, you'll see that we have a list of categories. And we can minimize that and see that we have a list of customers, employees, um, some order details, orders, products, shippers, and suppliers. So let me expand that back out again so you can see it. And it's a pretty big list. So let's start using JSON Path. The first thing you'll want to do is use some basic syntax to start your query, which is dollar sign period. This gets you at the base or root level. What if we want to see a list of employees? Let's type employees. Um, open bracket, close bracket, and our asterisk. And as you can see in our results pane, we have our list of employees. We can minimize that. Let's see, we have several different employees. Employee ID 3, employee ID 4, you get the picture. But what if we only want to see the last names of all of our employees? You simply, after the close bracket, add another period and select last name. So that gives us a list of all the last names in our last name objects. Okay, what if we want to see a specific employee with the last name of Dodsworth? So we'll back up here. Leave our open bracket, close bracket. And then as we um, filter our data, we'll want to use the question mark. Then we'll use open parentheses, close parentheses, and then in between our parentheses, we'll use the at symbol and period to indicate that we want to stay in this list. And then type in the last name. Equals, and you use double equals like you would in JavaScript. Tick, tick for a string and God's worth. As you can see right away, we have um, and Dodsworth in our results pane. What if we only want to see the city that Anne is in? Well, we'll add a period and type in city. And it will give us a result. Now let's try something different. I'm going to start over, delete this. Now we'll add back our basic syntax, which is dollar sign period. We'll select the employees list, and then our open and close brackets. Let's say we only want to filter the data to see the employee ID with, that equals four. Well, we'll add our, our question mark back in, um, and then our open and close parentheses, our at symbol, period, and then we'll list employee ID equals four. Now, four is a string, even though it is a number, 
So we'll have to put it in quotes. As you can see in the results pane, we have Margaret Pe Peacock. Now, what if you only want to see Margaret's last name? All you have to do is type another period, last name. All we see is Peacock. Okay, let's try something a little bit different. Let's start over again. Type in orders for the orders list. Our open and close brackets. Add our question mark for a filter. Open and close parentheses. Our at symbol, our period. And then we'll type in employee ID. Equals four. Now we have all the orders down in our results pane from Ms. Peacock. And if we scroll down, we can see there's quite a bit, quite a few orders. There should be 156 orders to be exact. Okay, what if we want to look at a specific order? Well, let's back up. Open and close bracket, question mark. And we'll select the order ID. And the order ID we want to see is order ID 10249. Again, 10249 is a string and not a number in our JSON file. So we'll have to put quotes around it. If it's just a number, you won't need the quotes. Now, the last thing I want to show you, if you want to bring back the entire JSON file, all the records, simply add the dollar sign. You'll add two periods and an asterisk. Now, that took a second because, uh, again, there's a lot of information there. So if we minimize this, you'll get an idea of how many lines of data there are, quite a few. Now, one of the cool things about the dollar sign dot dot, it's like a recursive search. So if we go back to our JSON file and then minimize the categories, and you see that we have our list or our, or our arrays of objects, and let's look at the products array. And in the products array, we have a unit price. We have a unit price for each item. Well, instead of typing dollar sign period and then your products array, all you have to do to search through the unit, all the unit prices is hit dollar sign, period, and then the unit price. And then that gives us a list of all, our, all the unit prices of all our products. It goes through and tries to find the object that matches the string that you typed in your JSON path. So that's JSON path in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of people say JSON, or I prefer JSON because, I mean, obviously, that's what it says. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.